Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Move with Love podcast. I am April Miranda, your host, healer, and guide, and I am so thrilled to introduce you to our guest today, Natasha Dreamseer. She's a dream interpreter, mystic, and intuitive dream work guide. She's your North Star, guiding you through deepened self-discovery, creativity, and divine connection to the power of of your dreams and actual dreams. Please welcome to the show, Natasha. Thank you, April, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I love talking about dreams and I know I've had a great connection with you. So I'm really looking forward to this. Oh, no, thank you for leaning in and saying yes. So please just, I wanna start with your story. I want you to please share three major turning points that led you to where you are today and what you do today? So this is something that actually I'm stepping into publicly uh, more recently. And it's something that I have been simmering on for a long time. Um, I grew up in a family of dreamers, but like vivid dreamers, uh, both my mom and my dad and especially my mother. And so dreams for us were always a conversation, things that we would unpack in the morning. Oh, I had this dream last night. And we would actually unpack and and talk about it as though, you know, we were receiving messages. It wasn't just this sort of jumbled, you know, uh, sort of chaotic scenes of the day. It was actually discerning them as though they were messages or who did you speak to or who came to visit you, which is quite common in the culture, but it was an ongoing dialogue with my family. And my dad is actually the first person that ever introduced me to the concept of -of out-of-body experiences. So um, it it is something that was quite prominent. And so it felt very natural for me to the point that I didn't really recognize ever that it was a thing, that it was a something that I had the ability to tune into. And um, so growing up, you know, always sharing. I still remember certain dreams that I had and precognitive dreams as well. And so even into becoming a teenager and and onwards. And then um, in 2003, which is where I experienced my Saturn return or ego death for for those of you a little bit more mystical, um, where the vivid dreaming just was coming through heavily for me. And then I quickly just naturally kind of gravitated toward dream interpretation. I started discerning them relatively quickly. And then I would kind of be the girl in the office that everybody would come to because I'd walk in in the morning and be like, you know, guys, I had this dream this morning. Oh, you know, like, you know, so I'd always walk in with that conversation, like, geez, I had this dream. And then I would sit there and pack it. So I kind of became the default dream interpreter. And that has followed me for, you know, the last uh, couple decades. And so it's always a thing, but I, I didn't tune into it as being something that could be a mission or an offering into the world. And I reflect on that quite a bit now. And I think to myself, it's because, you know, I was still growing and I'm still learning and I'm still discovering me and we still always are. Um, but it, the ability to, to discern dreams, I think comes with a level of experience and wisdom. And I've stepped into, um, that sense where I can feel confident actually being able to help other people, uh, clearly discern their dreams. So Mm, such a beautiful gift and offering. And I was just so guided to invite you into the show because what I understand is that it is the subconscious coming through us through symbols, through colors, through storytelling, through images. And um, so I guess with my, my question is with the, the symbols that come through and your interpretation, is it something that you channel? Is it something that you studied or do you kind of allow the interpretation to be of the viewer or the soul who experienced the dream? That's a great question. No one's asked me that yet. Um, And I would say all of the above, because the thing is, is that, you know, we are part of a collective consciousness, right? So we have this knowledge that has been here and been around since time immemorial, right? Ancient civilizations and 
you know, cultures have all, I mean, dreams to me are the starting point, right? You know, we're, we're living in a dream on some level. So um, we have a collective consciousness, which we can tap into for that universal wisdom. And so 100% it is study. And then another percentage of that is there's a saying in the dream world, which is the dreamer is the one, the dreamer tr- is the one that truly knows, right? And so different symbol because here's where it gets kind of weird different cultures have different associations right so you also have to take into a fact that there are different associations so for example somebody who may be a hindu vegetarian is going to look at a dream let's say if they see cattle in their dream or a steak in their dream may look at that differently than somebody of western culture so you have to actually be somewhat versed on that Number one. Number two, we also have, and and this is part of our collective consciousness and the work of, you know, Carl Jung and really every storyteller of, of all time, which is archetypes, tropes. Tropes are things that are sort of cliche. Um, they're metaphors, analogies, things like that, that are common in the collective. And so there's a, a divine wisdom that taps in and has associations for that. Right. And then the other part of it is discerning that and and applying that to oneself, because as I said, even a cat or, you know, a a panther or a leopard or cougar, those can be different symbols for different people. Yeah, I was on a, a call where someone had asked about, you know, the symbolic meaning of rats. Now, I put it out to the group, what do you think that means? And people gave me different answers, but there was one person who actually has them as pets. So her viewpoint is going to totally shift with that symbol. And this is where dream interpretation and dream work coaching, there's a a slight difference and nuance in them. But yeah, it, it is actually complex, but it's exciting. I love it. Oh my goodness. And when you... um. I guess I'm curious with how do you guide with um, the conversation or the coaching like you witness them or you interpret their dream and like is there a journey that you take them through or skills or like I'm, I'm really curious with um, the the how. Mm-hmm. So I would say this is where the intuitive aspect of what I do comes through or the channel comes through mm-hmm. because um, I you know I've done intuitive work with people for many years prior and so and just my natural tapping into that and trusting that um, is I'm able to simply tap into the energy of that person mm-hmm. um, rather quickly but if I had to rationalize it and things like that um I put out a video recently, which is the difference between a dream interpreter and a dream work guide, Mm. which is a dream interpreter is more like your foreign language film translator. So they're there to put the subtitles. They're just interpreting the symbology that you're seeing in the dream. And there's also some questioning, light questioning that I'll ask in dream interpretation. A key element is to differentiate between how the dreamer was feeling during the dream and how they felt when they woke up it actually gives Mm -hmm. you an an air of the tone of the dream Mm -hmm. okay so whether it's something that's a little bit um darker emotion or light emotion that sort of thing um dream work coaching is more like your film study professor Mm -hmm. they're there to help you, you know, they provide questions to help you understand the underlying themes, the different character arcs, the different storylines that exist within there. They can even help you sort of develop your own movie. And that's really kind of a very cool thing. Dream interpretation is something that actually I find uh, someone wrote to me and said, you know, dream interpretation is, is so much more difficult. And it is. Um, because of all of these different aspects of it, where DreamWork coaching takes on a little bit more of a therapeutic. So a lot of therapists and counselors um, are utilizing DreamWork coaching and psychotherapy as 
as a, a holistic therapy. Um, so they are, they do have a, a distinction. Mm-hmm. Um, both are super relevant and ideal, especially if someone dream work coaching is great for someone who is experiencing a lot of dreaming, um, is having a hard time making it make sense. Perhaps they're going through something or they're looking to really, you know, their spirit is at unrest and it's time for growth. And it's a great way to actually help them, um, transition that growth. Recently, I had someone who wanted to stop the dreaming and because it was so much that they were waking up tired all the time Mm -hmm. and like make this stop. And I took a different approach, which is we're going to lean into this because it's how you look at it. Some people can look at it as, you know, an annoyance while someone else is looking at it as a gift. And there are techniques to be able to, to, you know, sort of lean into that. I am not a neuroscientist. I am not a sleep expert, but obviously there are things that sort of bridge. Um, and so there are techniques to be able to lean into the dream world a little bit heavier, a little bit deeper. Dream interpretation is great for that person that wakes up and says, hey, you know what? I saw these symbols. What do you think they might mean? Mm, beautifully answered. Um, so with them, um, yeah, I, I encourage it when I, my clients talk about these vivid dreams, I'm like, that is a, a sign that your third eye is open, that you are receiving these messages that you can see, not just with these physical eyes, that you can see the truth. You can see the wisdom of the collective consciousness or yes. subconscious, unconscious. And what I find so fascinating in this time that we're alive, I do feel the collective subconscious and unconscious is coming up and out for us to see with our third eye you know and I am I I'm Mm -hmm. my next question will go a bit deep because I was reflecting this morning I'm like we all have memories right we have memories experiences from this lifetime and past lifetimes we also get the energy from our mom and dad and our lineage And then I was thinking, I'm like, our bodies have so much information. Then I was even getting deeper. I'm like, with the water that we're drinking, like the water has been circulating from rain to ocean. This this memory of earth is in us. And then I was like, right. And then I was like, I'm like, our kidneys are filtering all day. I'm like, our kidneys are holding so much energy. So I was like getting really deep. And I'm like, wow, it's not just our cells. It's not just the DNA, but the space between, you know, the atom and the electron, like that is where the memory is. That is what is so tangible and feels so quote unquote heavy in this 3D body. And I'm bringing this up because whether it's dreams or the memories or past life experiences, um, how can we, navigate through or how can we shake off or elevate or kind of I'm trying to say like because while I'm understanding and interpret like working with frequency lately I'm like I feel as though we got to get into that space but understanding the psychology is what I'm really curious about you know when you brought up Carl Jung with the archetypes and so do you have, um, or what would you like to share with them, um, the psychology that may be encompassing the conscious, subconscious, unconscious of self and the collective in this timeline, lifetime, and past lifetimes? Yes. Okay. So we're getting into it. That's a yes. great question. And I mean, there's so many different layers to dream interpretation, dream analysis, and really tapping into the untapped potential of our subconscious and our super conscious. So I'm going to bring that in because I think that's what you're actually, there's a whole other level of consciousness and you're right. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff that's embedded in our cellular memory and these codes that are in there and then everything 
has this, right? They are lifetimes and recirculating and, and this energy. And then we've got combinations of the things that are happening in the world. And then we've got things that are happening within our own world, our relationships, our, our children are this. Um, and then workplace environments and the interactions there. So we are divinely designed to be able to handle so, so, so much. And I think with all of these things, it allows us to stretch our capacity to be able to hold even more as we move through and add to the collective consciousness for the future. Mm. And so what we are essentially, you know, I had come out of a meditation and the word I had was called thermocrisis. And I, I've, there's only one explanation that I have found. And it was like, why did I think of this? And it was actually, it's, it's when you're feeling all of these things over a long term, it creates another sort of heat and energetic frequency or vibration or level. And I think that's actually what you're talking into. So I'm just like, whoa, buzzing right now. Um, and that I think is part of the collective ascension process. You know, so it's combining all of these things and compounding to create a bigger, more amplified level of resonance and energy that we can push out into the universe, out into the cosmos and have it reverberate back to us. And that's why love is so important. And that is why this time that we're in is calling for us to examine our dark corners. And what a wonderful way to do that through dreams and through and and not just nocturnal dreams but through our daydreams and our visions and what we're holding and identifying the things that kind of just slide through the days when we're sort of lost in a moment of reverie um being conscious of those thoughts because they all hold an energetic frequency and pattern Mm. and so super important great question I'm like, yeah. Yeah. like I'm, I'm getting goosebumps all over and you said it, you, you said like it's coming up so we can expand so we mm-hmm. can hold it. And I, I think with my with the work with, I do with Reiki here, you know, you know, there are a lot of clients that want to like hide their fear, their shame, their guilt, their grief. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, expand. I'm like, make space for it all. I'm like, instead of like trying to compartmentalize and shove it and hide, I'm like, it's going to come up. But when you say expand, I'm like, I just see like lengthening the spine and holding these arms out, stretch. Like, this is all part of me. This grief, this fear, this rage, this guilt, this shame, and the bliss and the joy. And you know, the darkness, the shadows and the light and bliss. And so I do feel when you talk about the, um, the consciousness coming through, it's like, oh, yeah, we got to expand to make space for it all. And, Absolutely. you know, while we're talking about this, I'm like, yeah, we're seeing the darkest of dark in the human behavior. But I know the other end of the spectrum exists. Like, I do feel it is coexisting you know when they talk about earth and the new earth like i do feel it's um it's a frequency thing i do feel it's like I don't, a state of mind is not even the word no but you know what i mean like i i feel it is coming up and out and through and just for us to see witness accept forgive and then love it all yeah as a whole absolutely absolutely a ho to that um because and that's why i think this is and it's not to rationalize the things away that are happening in the world um no it's when we have to examine our dark corners we have to understand that we're examining the wholeness of us when we do that and that we exist in a totality. And if you don't address the grief and the sadness and things like that, it's not to banish them, but it's to acknowledge them and be able to transmute that energy into a light form that will positively allow you to radiate love 
and love and how we love is really what I believe is the legacy of all of us humans that are here because energy can't be destroyed. I mean, you work with energy quite a lot, so you know this, but energy can't be destroyed. So we are energetic beings. And so long after we got, we're gone, our energetic imprint is left behind to be added to the collective for the expanding consciousness for the, the generations forward. People actually don't really get this. We think that we're just gone. We are not, we are actually leaving an energetic imprint that is our legacy. Ooh, rewind and listen to that mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, we are leaving yeah. an imprint. We are contributing to the energy of the universe, even beyond our physical time here. Yes. And for you to say, yeah, we're contributors. Like we are active co-creators. Mm -hmm. every moment of every day and yeah like understand that every thought has energy every word has power to create every feeling every action like we must be intentional if we're yes. going to be contributing to this imprint of the universe yes. thank you for saying that oh my gosh yeah. and what <laughs> the the saying of like we are the future ancestors behave accordingly. Absolutely. And I think it's, you know, I want to make sure that people realize that you're not here. It's not about now. You're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I have this responsibility. I need to be perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. you are to simply acknowledge the parts of yourself mm -hmm. and allow them to have their space, but in a way that you can transmute the energy into a way that will positively contribute. Mm -hmm. And so that to me is super important. You know, it's why, you know, why did we have goddesses of grief and anger? It's because they, why did they, why would they have the ancients knew that these were powerful attributes that were ultimately our most divine teacher of all. And so bringing that back to you know, there's a goddess of tragedy. There's a muse of that. There's all of these things because they are inherently part of what makes us whole. And mm -hmm. so bringing that back to, for example, why I think dream work is so important is that dreams are a neutral zone. And so I refrain from using positive negative a lot now. I'm being a little bit more deliberate when I say that in regards to dreams specifically, mm -hmm. because dreams are a neutral zone. An ominous dream is just an ominous dream, but it's telling you something, which is a good thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're all, it's all good. They're a wow. neutral zone. And so mm -hmm. they're always kind of working with you. And even if you don't interpret every single dream you have, you trust the process of individuation that is actually happening within you. Mm. So just like when we go to sleep, our physicality, we need that to restore our physical bodies and things like that. But we do need that for our mental capacity. So many things are tied to sleep, actually. Um, but your dream sleep, you know, is super important as well. Because, you know, if you're not processing and and doing the things that you need to do then how does that affect you on a physical level and the hormone level and all of these kinds of things but carl Jung said you know listen it, the process of individuation is going to happen mm -hmm. and so my my i think mission is ultimately it's here for us to tap into and lean into more because we have become complacent with dreams we have become, we have been made to feel that dreams are just this random day of Netflix binge watching and random thoughts that just kind of, you know, are like static in our minds versus these incredible opportunities for creativity, problem solving, um, divine connection mm -hmm. that royalty ancestors, you know, of every single you know, lifetime and timeline has actually tapped into dreams is what has made all of this happen. 
So there should be no question as to its potency. The question Mm -hmm. is, why aren't we tapping it into it even more? Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm, I'm like, if it's there, if it's something that you're working with, let's tap into that a little bit more. Um, for creativity, just, you know, lean into it. There is a muse that exists. We want to summon that muse, but there is an unlimited well of ideas, possibilities, things like that, that are looking for a home to be channeled outwards. Yes. So you, all you must be is receptive, be the receptacle and allow it to pour into you. Right. And that's what dreams can actually do. They can give you I mean, everyone has had where they've had a problem, they've been perplexed, they've gone to bed and woke up with the solution. How many times has that happened? Everybody's had it happen. Yeah, yeah. I was even telling my husband last night, I'm like, okay, I'm like, let's plant, you know, let's ask our ancestors and guides, I'm like, to solve problems for us. Like I said this last night to my husband, I'm like, okay. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, just ask. I'm like, just ask. (laughs) <laughs> I can see you doing ask that. Your team. Ask your team for support. Your team. Right. But I love how you even six, like you, you know me, like I love working with the chakras, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's with my Reiki clients or even the mm-hmm. book I wrote, it's like, okay, align, activate and attract, right? We align the energy centers and then like, you know, there's different practices to open all that up, Yeah, but then to, you know, like receive the downloads through your crown chakra, see it with your third eye, write it, speak it out with your, your throat chakra, feel it like that's the juicy part. And then take that inspired action and then incubate it for the divine time. And then you receive, right? Like, so that's yeah. the secret sauce, but we are connected to this information field that is infinite. And we are the vessels that will bring it earth side, yes. you know? We are Absolutely. the vessels to bring it earth side. Um, you mentioned a few times to transmute. You talk yes. about like the darkness to transmute it into love. And, you know, I with the name of the podcast and everything that I stand for, like moving with love and not fear. So tell me your best practices of how you transmute any shadows or darkness into love. So for me, you know, some people do it with somatic practices and that's something that I'm leaning into more and more and more. I'm, I'm a little bit more too much, almost in my head, um, a little bit more cerebral. And so, I mean, I meditate heavily. Um, that's been my, for the last 20 years, uh, practicing transcendental meditation. I was also initiated into Kriya yoga. Um, so that's been a practice that I've had since that since 2007, actually. Um, and so you know, and then now, of course, breath work and all of these modalities, but I love creativity, mm-hmm. not for it to be not so that you must gain something monetarily necessarily create to create, to create and allow it to move. And if you look at the great artists that we've had, whether musicians, writers, um, you know, visual artists, they take their pain and some of their best work comes out of it. That's a transmutation mm-hmm. of energy. So for some people, it might be movement and dance, right? I know you're a dancer, right? It, it may be, you know, seeing, uh, you know, a Reiki practitioner to help you if somebody is stuck. Like, I absolutely believe that. Um, for me, I really love creativity and Mm -hmm. in whatever form. So it's something that I really lean into heavily. Your journaling practices, of course, there's so many things there Mm -hmm. uh, to just rage out on the page, right? The, you know, Mm -hmm. the uh, morning pages, which is a a great practice from the artist way. So there are multiple different tools and that's why I do all the things really. Mm -hmm. I mean, (laughs) you know, even my essential oils are something that just, you know, I I sit with my plant allies, my crystal allies. Mm -hmm. I have a moment, um, whether it's in the middle of the day and maybe I need to do some box breathing, but writing poetry was something that, um, was really big for me in 2022, um, and into the beginning of 2023, Mm -hmm. which is, I was going through and really understanding my darker shadows and when I felt tormented, it would actually kick off 
something in me that, and suddenly I would, I would write. So instead of allowing it to kind of live in my head, I started to write. I wrote about my pain and what I was feeling in that moment. And, you know, it's reading through it because it's exactly at this time last year that I was processing a lot of things. I'm just so proud of what I was able to tap into and actually bring forward versus mm-hmm. allowing it to be that little voice that's nah, 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 that still it has a home in your head just r- rambling it's sort of monkey chatter mm-hmm. I was able to actually take it and I was able to transmute it into art and just and it released from my body in a way that allowed me to stand boldly in my truth and say the things that I needed to express. So I think expression, whether it is through body, whether it is channel and transmission, transmitted through another person, a practitioner, Mm -hmm. or whether it's through art, Mm -hmm. we are meant to move energy, right? Mm -hmm. Move love, just like the title of your book. And so that is so, so appropriate, actually. Um, Mm what do what you do I, i'll say this so this is an interesting point is in dreams for example we do something a little bit different mm-hmm. um, for people that want to hold on to a dream or want to keep dreaming in those early hours you actually hold your position mm. yeah so you don't move mm. and so if you go to the bathroom and you come back you go back into the same position to try to get the dream to continue going on why because movement transmutes and shifts energy right yeah <laughs> so it's actually a, a reverse technique just if somebody wants to kind of Ooh. continue or hold on to or try to remember or recall it's actually a technique to kind of freeze a little bit before the the energy starts moving yeah wow so simple and profound um so what it like when you even say like you transmute energy with expression and creativity what I was hearing is that you are bringing the unseen seen. Yes. Oh, thank you for saying that. Yes. Yes. You brought it, whether it's with writing, whether it's drawing or dancing. And I'm like, whoa, it's, it was just out here in the information field, the super conscious. And you brought it through and out. And I, that's what I tell my clients. I'm like, the energy just needs a way out. Yes. Right. Whether it's yes. tears, sweat, breath. Oh, pee poo. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it just needs a way out. <laughs> out. <laughs> like intentionally out. And our, our bodies are so wise for us to um, receive these dreams, receive this information. But I think it's the same tool that gets in the way that prevents the transmutation. Is that something that you agree yeah, with, disagree absolutely. with? Well, absolutely. I agree with it. Um you know, and that's where the dreams, especially nocturnal dreams are so beautiful because your, your consciousness, your ego, it's, it's not in the equation. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, truths are allowed through, they're allowed, right. Mm -hmm. Versus our personal biases or our shame or all of the things that my filter that information the filter Mm -hmm. is removed so the filter of bias ego um all the things that are held in the con when we're conscious of things within our our physical consciousness it's all removed and so it gets freedom of expression you know in that moment and then you're able to receive because you don't have any blocks that are blocking and filtering Mm -hmm. that information through so Absolutely. Even daydreams, um, even though, yes, you are awake, but you might be lost in a moment of reverie. And it's interesting what you can actually kind of pull out. And all of a sudden you just, it's a moment of recognition um, to the kinds of thoughts that are the thought loops. Um, I I have had to do this a lot for myself and um, which is just catching myself in the thought (laughs) doing my reframe and going, okay, yeah, we're not going to give more energy to that. Right. And choosing and consciously choosing. Um, And so, yes, absolutely. It plays a role. Mm -hmm. Mm, But for you to even say consciously choose, because a lot of people out there are still on autopilot. They don't even know that they do have a choice that they, you know, whether they call it the matrix or you even mentioned thought loops, you even said like you have the awareness to say like 
okay, I'm done with that thought. Let's not put any more energy into that. So it, I do feel it's more like, um, is it the word skill or even just expansion of self-awareness, self-discovery, self-exploration, that um, it does seem like it's a practice with this um, receiving these messages in your dreams and interpreting them or leaning in towards a guide and these, um, the wisdom. Because, um, yeah, you're like, why don't we lean into this wisdom? <laughs> we all dream. We all have it. <laughs> um, and it's not woo-woo, people. It's It absolutely is. Like, you know, one time someone asked me, like, do you believe in all that magic? Because I use the word magic a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was like, yeah magical aren't you mm -hmm. you know <laughs> we magic I don't look at it as just sort of doing tricks no it's the ability to um tap into to see see that there is something so much more so much bigger and divine in this orchestration of all mm -hmm. that is I'm sure you see that when you look at your children and think where did you come from right <laughs> Or when I look at, for example, animals and all the variety, like I do it, like I see God in animals, right? I see yeah. God in, in flowers and I ah. see that those things because I'm just like, how the heck? Talk about level of creativity. Whoa, that's creativity right there. Mm -hmm. There has to be, you know, something, another sort of benevolence to all of this this just can't be it's so beautiful oh. um the fruits we eat and all uh, just like it blows my mind right so we I, and I know you you look you know we both look at things through a mystical lens so mm -hmm. that might be easy for us but for anybody else that's kind of going you know this is you know this sounds great but like you know where's the science or where's the right you know where's the logic and things like that what I say is simply suspend all of that because if you could just simply suspend it for a moment mm -hmm. you would open yourself up what you will inherit is derived from what you're willing to let go and you you leave yourself open to possibility um and that's a great place to be who wouldn't want to be open to possibility so just be open the minute that you start to create um, borders and fences around yourself well you're not going to experience the magic that I'm experiencing because you have created a border and I'm not believing something because I read it in a book this is something that you know because you have experienced it and if you don't allow yourself the experience of it you will never know and therefore you will not be able to believe mm. so you know, allow yourself to be open. But at the same time, I, I do have compassion. Um, and it's a matter of tapping into the fact that you have this. Everybody, we are, are sitting here on the shoulders of technology and invention that our forefathers have created, Albert Einstein, you know, and all of these, you know, the, the, you know, the periodic table of elements, and the DNA double helix strand, all of those things were thought of through a dream um, to be able to push that out. Even Google, Larry Page, that came through a dream. There are so many stories, you know, so why are we even questioning the potency of this when we ourselves, the very same people who are denying themselves the understanding of this magic can all agree that they have solved problems through their dreams that they have woken up and the dream has been solved the problem has been solved mm -hmm. right so if you have experienced that then you kind of know that right mm. or having an anxious or nightmarish dream when you're going through a period of anxiety in your waking life well relate it right it's there and mm -hmm. so the proofs already exist it's just your willingness to be open to it and allow the light into those those things um, versus thinking that it's a sort of thing that people have bought into. They drank the Kool-Aid and now we're all into this because we want a sense of belonging. It has nothing to do with that. We're not trying to buy the cool clothes to fit in with our friends in high school. There's <laughs> nothing to do with it. This has to... <laughs> This has to do with, it's nothing to do with that. This is a whole other 
thing that's happening. And it's not about somebody being better than someone else or someone tapping. You just, that person just hasn't tapped into their own magic because Mm. of the layers of programming and Mm. construction and separation and, you know, layers that have been on them. And, um, and it's, it's hard, right? Because, you know, not everyone is willing to embrace the change that comes with it. As you know, you know, anybody that's been on the spiritual path, so, so to speak, it's not an easy path. It is hard. It is harder than anybody thinks. So this is not, Hey, a sense of belonging. No, you go to your depths. Mm -hmm. It is difficult. This is like, suddenly you're, you know, you've got this awakening and you realize that, ah, okay. So there's, I'm responsible. (laughs) Yes. Wait a second. I can't be a victim. (laughs) Right. And even with that, that radical responsibility it's yes. something that it when you said the words already like compassion and responsibility because it's like okay compassion for where I've been where we've been okay this is where we are and now radical responsibility of where we can go of where we are going and it is being intentional it is being the creator and you know when you talked about seeing God everywhere Like whether it's kids and animals, the fruit, the plants, and even all of these creations, I was just like, I'm like, wait a minute. We are God. (laughs) We are God embodied. We are actually God in this physical form. But, you you know, we, I'm like, wait, you're God embodied. I'm like, we got work to do. (laughs) I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Like I actually was writing this in my morning pages this morning. I'm like, Wow. I really forgot, but like witnessing my kids and it's like a remembering and reclaiming, Mm. remembering that we are whole and complete and love, reclaiming that we are here to experience, to enjoy. Like I look at my kids like, oh, they deserve the world. Like, wait, I deserve the world. (laughs) It was like, like the way it is like, whether it's inner child healing, but it's like seeing the mirror or seeing the the holograph is that what people are saying like oh this I can't even describe it yeah yeah yeah. you know what I mean but I'm like I do yeah like namaste the light in me sees the light in you or bows down to the divinity in you that's in the divinity in me I'm just but it was like oh yeah we are God embodied so these dreams are like messages or the answers or the solutions that want to come through us through expression yes. through creativity to bring they are here this is you know the opportunity for people like if if i said to them would you like to speak to your highest self would you like your higher self to speak to you everyone would say yes mm-hmm. well guess what it does in your dreams if people that want to you know multi-dimension or mm-hmm. be part of this sort of multiverse or you know the holographic universe and they want to kind of timeline jump between these different realms guess what dreams can do that mm-hmm. you can actually access different environments in different lifetimes and you talked about that earlier i mean i have something that I talk about, which is psychic flashbacks, where a lot of women actually get them, where it might have been some sort of persecution or something that might have happened in the ancestral lineage. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we'll get it as a sort of dream. And it's like, whoa, there are different types of dreams that have been documented. And so there's enough of these out there that we know that this exists, but you can access, you know, our subtle body is actually accessed while you go into that dream state and we move into an astral or out-of-body experience Mm -hmm. even a sleep paralysis can actually be flipped into a lucid dreaming episode or into an astral travel episode so we have our physical body but we also have our subtle body Mm -hmm. our spiritual Mm -hmm. body right and we can access those through the dream state it's powerful oh my gosh I could talk to you about this all day I know I could talk to you all day (laughs) oh my goodness I'm like there I'm like let's like that's another episode that's another episode like you were just dropping terms like do people even know what this is but like I guess those listening to just lean in and stay curious Natasha said to just be open and receive 
just be open and receive and see what comes through. Um, Natasha, what does move with love mean to you? Ooh, move to love means with me, I just immediately got this visual of just moving in the world with love, mm -hmm. moving in the world in the way, in a way I just kind of am now seeing myself walking down the street and it's like, you know, acknowledging the trees and just kind of looking around and looking at the blue of the sky or even the gray of the sky and just understanding that this is a part of me and I'm a part of it and loving that so that I can be part of that reflection of love that is constantly circulating through me. Um, doesn't mean I have a, a, a happy moment every single moment, but my overarching, I'm, you're allowed to have moods, but my disposition of who I am is love. Mm. And that, so moving through the world with love. Thank you for sharing. Um, where can our audience find you, um, follow you, please share <laughs> so thank all you of so it. so much. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I can be found um, mainly on Instagram at Natasha Dreamseer. My link in bio will also have a discover your dream archetype. I just launched it. Um, so you can actually take the quiz and discover your dream archetype. Mm -hmm. And I'm also on Substack. The link is in my bio there as well. Um, you can access everything through dreamseerportal.com. Mm. My Substack subscription, if you want to. And things will continuously be unfolding. I do have a Dream Seer portal app that I'm working on right now. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of goodness. But if you would like dream interpretation or dream work guidance, you can reach me through uh, dreamseerportal.com, uh, through my Substack, Natasha Dreamseer, online at Instagram at Natasha Dreamseer. Beautiful. So I will put all of these in the notes. So whether you're watching this YouTube or listening to this podcast, you'll see all the notes there, all the links of where you can plug into this wisdom. Please lean in and stay curious with your dreams. Oh, beloved Natasha, thank you. Thank you for sharing your, your message, your magic, your medicine with all of us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So until next time, let's share the message. Let's adapt the mindset, live the lifestyle. Let's move with love together.